Open your Bibles to Luke chapter number 9. We're going to look at verse number 59. When you found that, turn back to Matthew chapter number 4. I feel like God's answer to prayer throughout the week, the night, the morning. I just wrestled with God saying, I don't want to just have another morning service, but I want you to move God. I believe He has. And, uh, what, do you, what do you want us to look up again? Luke what? Luke chapter 9, verse number 59. We'll look at this toward the end. And then turn with me to Matthew chapter number 5. We'll look at 4 and 5 actually. Luke 9, 59. The word of God says, And he said to unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Matthew chapter number, well, let's just look at number 4. And I'll reference the, the other part. Matthew 4, verse number 18. The Bible says, And Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. And he said unto them, Follow me, that I will make you fishers of men. And straightway they left their nets, and they followed him. I just want to, this morning, look at following Christ. It's the greatest thing that you and I will ever do in our life. A very quick rundown, I've told you uh, over the past week and a half that we've been into January, that what I want to look at during the month of January is that of sanctification and giving our life entirely to God told you that Job, that first book that was written chronologically was written because God said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Job was living a righteous life. God saw it. And he wanted to know if the enemy saw it as well. And the enemy did see it. And so the enemy wanted to attack and influence uh, uh, Job uh, uh, in a harsh way. God knew that Job was a man that lived a sanctified life. He didn't compare himself to other men, but he compared himself to God. His cry was, God, I'm thou when I look at you. So I, I believe that for us this morning, our gauge of how we live godly and righteously and we conduct our life and we find purpose within our life isn't gauged as we look at ourselves on a community level or when we compare ourselves to one another. But when we look at the Word of God and when we compare ourselves to the holiness of God, that is how we find ourselves in a sanctified position. And God is looking for men and women who will have sanctified holy lives. So we find that there are two instances I looked at this morning in which Christ is giving a call for those to follow after Him because He wants to do something with their life. We find it's make them fishers of men. We find it is to do uh, uh, work that is concerning the kingdom of God, which is about the kingdom and not about this world. And so as Christ gives a call, we see two different individuals, or we see three individuals, but we see two different uh, responses to the call of Christ. Let me look at that first call of Christ this morning because I believe that even the, the, what's transpired uh, uh, this morning in the service correlates with, with what we find here in Matthew chapter number 4. The Bible says, first of all, that, that the Lord saw that and Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee and he saw two brethren. You see, Christ does see us. And uh, some may look and 
say that we have a God that is on an impersonal level. I disagree uh, to the nth degree on that because we serve a God who knows us and sees us and wants to have a relationship with us on a very personal level. Mm -hmm. And so he looks and he sees not just people, but he looks and he sees two brethren in here. We find those, that those Peter and Andrew, he sees them on a very personal way. We are never out of God's sight. Amen. Hebrews tells us that, 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 that all nature is manifest in the sight. Job said, for his eyes are upon the ways of men, he sees their goings. In Exodus, he told Moses, he said, Moses, I, 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 I have seen the affliction of my people. God sees. I want you to know you're an individual here this morning. You may be collected as a congregation, but God sees you individually. And God wants a very personal relationship with you. Whether you're not saved this morning, God calls you to a relationship of salvation. But if you are saved this morning, you should know uh, uh, this, and may I reinforce it to you, that God wants a personal relationship with you, and He has something personally for you this morning. The Bible says that Jesus not only saw them, but He said unto them. Do you know God is still speaking to people this morning? He wants a personal relationship with you. He has something personal for you. He sees you and He speaks to you. And they say, how is that so, Pastor? How, how can it be? He spoke to them in the same way that He spoke to Peter and Andrew. He's still speaking to His children today. I want to tell you one of the greatest ways that He speaks to us is through the Word of God. We need to be in the Word of God. You're looking for answers for your life. Thank God that you're here at church. And I believe church attendance is vitally important. But I believe that you need to be in the Word of God as well. You need to be in the Word of God every day. There's lots of people who have excuses why they can't be in the Word of God. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But I need to tell you that the Word of God is God's way of ministering to you. We're at the beginning of the year. I want you to, in your life, pick up the Word of God and read it for yourself. I know devotional books are good, but devotional books will never take the place of the Word of God. You need the Word of God in your life. You don't need someone's interpretation of it. You don't need some a uh, 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 paraphrased version of the Word of God. You may say, but listen, I don't understand some things. But I believe that if you will get into the Word of God, the Word of God, the Bible says that the Word is quick, which means it is alive. It is powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It will speak to you. It will minister to you like no other book. Begin to read it. Begin to allow God to speak to your heart and your life. That that is what will take you to a personal relationship with God that will set you apart from everybody else. Mm -hmm. God's not looking for cucky, uh, cut it, uh, men and women. He's looking to individualize you and to have an individual relationship with you because He's made you as an individual. How else does He speak to us? He speaks to us through anointed preaching. God help us. To find uh, the, the Word of God that as it's preached to us, it is important to hear it and allow the Word of God to find a lodging place in our heart and may it grow. But God also speaks by Spirit. You see, He speaks through the gifts of the Spirit even as we have this morning. I'm thankful that when God speaks to someone, there's a living a life and has sought the gifts of God, that as God speaks, He ministers to the body. God also speaks in this prayer. Having that time where we set aside, where we, we pray. And then He says this, He says, follow me. You see, this, what He spoke to Peter and Andrew, He wanted him, them to follow Him with loyalty and with dedication, without anyone else having preeminence in their life. 
He wanted to have preeminence. He wanted them to follow Him. God has not changed, though it's been a, a, a hundreds of years, almost 2,000 years later, God is still speaking and God is still looking for men and women who will beckon to His call and listen to Him and follow Him and make Him the preeminence of their life. He said, and I will make. You see, God wants to make something out of us. God is looking for men and women to make pillars out of. Uh, will you be the one that God can make a pillar out of? Because He will make of you, He'll make of you, the Bible says, a fisher of men. You see, when we allow God's Word to speak to us in a place of prayer to speak to us through the power of the Holy Ghost, when we set Him in preeminence, and He changes our life, we cannot help but to evangelize others with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. It wasn't quite the same response in Luke chapter number 9. The Bible says he said unto another, follow me, but he said, Lord, permit me first to go and bury my father. <coughs> I want to look at some problems here very quickly. I see the time and I know where I'm at. See, the problem wasn't and the fact that Jesus didn't understand that there was some grief he was going through. And that he needed to bury his father. The problem is not with burying someone. All of us understand, probably most of us in here, what it's like to lose a loved one and the grief that is involved in that. Jesus didn't have a problem with that he needed to bury his father. It was that that took precedence over his relationship with Jesus. The first problem was the priority. In 2018, I feel like God has challenged my heart to challenge you this morning. Will you follow Him, allowing Him to be your priority? It's amazing how folks can say, I just don't have the prayer life if you understood the things that I need to do in my home. No, the problem is it's not a priority for you to pray or it's not a priority for you to be in the Word of God. As a pastor, as a chaplain, I, I, can, I can give you a list that's a mile long of folks that would say, I don't know what happened. I, I, somewhere I, in the middle of life, I stopped going to church. I stopped making the things of God a priority. Hey, that's, that's the problem. You didn't allow God to be a priority. God is calling to us and He wants us to make Him priority in His life, in our life. He wants to be priority. See, He doesn't want us to be priority. He wants to be priority. He wants us to follow Him and He will decide on the direction of you see the popularity of the problem. If you look on, he said, follow me, but he said, Lord, permit me. You know the biggest problem in serving Christ is that we put me before we put God. Mm -hmm. That's just how the culture is. You see it at the checkout line, you know, someone jipping in line because they want to be out first. Everyone thinks that they're the priority. Me, 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 me. God has called us to put me last in Christ as priority. He's calling you. He's calling me this morning. Will you follow me? Will you drop your nets? Would you put me as first priority even above all the cares of life? The barrier was the cares of life. I believe that we would see God move in a much greater way in our lives if we put Christ first and Him crucified. There was pride in the problem, not only His priority, not only the popularity of, of, of living in a culture, putting me first and taking care of me. But the problem, the problem was that, 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 that he was, I've got to be the one. 
I read a saying several years ago that talks about a man. He said, there's a sickness that comes into families. And the sickness actually affects everybody in the family except for the one who has the sickness. And the sickness is pride. Amen. When we put ourselves before everyone else, there's a problem. And discipline. And it creates sickness. Christ, you are forced and you're crucified. See, there was a bit of hypocrisy. Sister Matt, if you come back to the piano. He said, I'll follow you, but me first. Sometimes we tell God, God, I'll follow you, but God doesn't want the contingencies. God wants us. God wants us. You want to feel God in a personal way? He's reaching out. You may say, but I don't feel him speaking. He spoke here this morning already. He longs to speak to you through his word. He longs to speak to you through prayer. I pray that he's speaking to you through an only preaching. God does still speak. And as he speaks, he's saying, follow me. Put the cares of this world behind and follow me. And he said, I will make. How many of you in this year want God to make something great in your life? And I will make. And the result will be you fishers of men. He will have an evangelistic approach because we put Christ first. This morning, because of time and the way the Lord worked and moved, I just feel like I want you to stand right where you are. I want you to bow your head. I want you to bow your head.